Who are we likely to... Rory's emergency. Yeah, okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he's emergency at this stage. Um, uh, yeah, so um, the Darcy will play. Um, Archie. Um, Harbrow. Uh, I just can't remember who we know. I need to change. But the guys that are in. Um, Two. Tuke Miller. Uh, one. And... I'm trying to remember. Fifth. Yeah, five changes. Um... Oh, uh, Fiorini. Fiorini will play. So is Archie a gamble? Well, we've taken on what we happened with Ainsworth. Yeah, um, yeah, Ben missed eight games and then had a half a game in the second. Um, Cowes missed six. Um, and he's done a fair bit of training. Could have played last week. Uh, was picked the week before. We just had a bit of a tight in the hemi. So it's a gamble in some ways, I suppose. But... But we'll limit his game time like we did Ben. Uh, the fact he got through pretty well, so we're confident that the same will happen. I guess I feel those, um, most of your changes have been forced, but you've brought in a few, a few of those guys are known for their defensive pressure. Is that like a person and a Miller and a Archie to a slightly lesser extent? But is that like a... Um, oh, I think, th I think that's, uh, that's certainly a byproduct. Uh, but Darcy's in good firm. Obviously, Mature are out. We had to have a small forward. Uh, that we rate our chief pretty highly, so um, we think he can give us a, uh, a bit of class. But he's, you know, his pressure's pretty good. Um, Turk's obviously a replacement for Barlow, uh, who can play in the mid and can play forward. So I think it's just the way they worked out with the people that we've got. But um, uh, obviously, with our forward line now, it's uh, that's going to have a fair bit of speed and a fair bit of forward pressure. So uh, we've got to work hard now to get the ball inside our forward fifty. You said after um, Saturday night. Chat to Tommy about the way he's been playing. Have you, have you had that chat this week, and how, how did you receive it? Yourself? Uh, yes, had the chat and received it pretty well. Do you think he sort of he knew that that was, uh, <laughs> that, that it was? Oh like, no, I, 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 I've spoken about him the, the, the next couple. Yeah, he, he's got a he, he's got a fair amount of self awareness. So we had looks at some tape and things that uh, he's not doing at the moment that he does do when he when he plays well uh, and the way he needs to go about it. So. Um, Look, look, he copped a really bad knock there in the second quarter, which limited him a, a fair bit last week. Uh, but, yeah, he, he's taken that on board pretty well. Is it just, just his movement? Yeah, I, I think he's... And we've seen it over a period of time. I, I was involved at North Melbourne with Wayne Carey um, and seen when players sometimes in certain situations where they're on form tend to plonk themselves and want the ball high and actually kick it to me, where um, Tom uh, was obviously a very good mark and he's got long arms, but he needs to be on the move. Um, and I think he's, he's stationed himself a bit. And, and last week wasn't a great uh, game for forwards, with a little bit slippery with the rain and etc. So, um, but, uh, but there were some... Uh, there were some examples there where Tom could have got, actually gone on his bike and, and moved around. Um, and I think that's been a pattern probably for three of the last four weeks. So um, now that he's aware of it, really, I think he was aware of it, but probably hadn't done anything about it. So um, um, hopefully that uh, you know, he can start to turn the corner. Does he play into a personal duel with like, wanting to win a strength battle? Or, or um, is he was running under the footy a, bit a few weeks ago, which... So sometimes maybe timing. Yeah, I think it was timing initially. I think, uh, and then he's uh, certainly some players uh, get into that, you know, that strength battle, um, and seen some exceptional players. You know, I remember when I was at North, as I said, with Wayne Carey, is probably the best forward there's been. Um, at times that you no, know, he wanted to win the strength battle if he wasn't playing well, um, yeah. where he had a, a really good athletic ability to move around and. Um, I think he, you know, players do fall in that trap at times. I've seen, I've seen Plugger do it, I've seen Dunstall do it. Um, uh, and it's marvellous what games the mind can play on you um, at certain times. So Tom's still only young, so you know, I think it's just part of his learning curve. Is it, does he take on, well, he's captain, but he takes on a lot of responsibility personally, doesn't he, for the fortunes of the side? Yeah, and I think most leaders do, most good leaders do. Stephen does as well. Um, so, yeah, I think, 
uh, you know, I spoke to him about that really just to get his form right first. That's his, that's his main thing. So, you know, he can lead by his actions. Um, I think he uh, obviously wants to get around his teammates and help them at the same time, which uh, is easier to do when you're playing well. What about Gas? It's all about Gas this week. Yes, yeah, all about the, the great man. Yeah, so um, it's interesting some stats. Uh, I mean, everyone knows how, how great a player he's been. and Not that you look at ranking points or all that sort of stuff, but uh, Champion Data came out with a, with a paper this week that his average for a period from 2010 to 14, his worst 40 games was still 2.2% higher than everyone else's best period of 40 games. Like, it was just phenomenal, some of the stuff that's come out, of, you know, the level that he's been able to play at for so long. Um, and not being here when it happened, but he was such a high level at Geelong, and people probably questioned, probably myself as well, how he was going to perform when he came to a new club that was just starting. So it was really a bunch of kids, and he seemed to have taken his game to another level. Um, and to be able to respond to that and have the, have the quality that he's been able to put, it, put out week in and week out. And I think that's a measure of a real champion is what they're able to do over a long period of time. You know, I've always admired Lee Matthews for his ability um, to do it week in and week out, year in, year out, and Gary certainly reached that level. Do you think, do you think it took him coming to a weaker club? Just because football's easier in a good side, Chris Judd did the same thing. He changed the way he played footy yeah. and probably became a more complete footballer at Carlton, even though he was banged up, but certainly more inside. And Gaz is the same. Yeah, um, yeah. That's hard for me to say his mindset because obviously didn't yeah. know him then. Um, but uh, yeah, he obviously took on a lot of responsibility. A being captain, um, B not a great deal of support because the team was so young. Um, for him to be able to do that and being tagged and uh, uh, to be able to rack up higher numbers, but also the quality of the performance, it, you know, is a real credit to him. And what about now? Like he's he's, he's not at that 2014 level, but he's played three or or four games this year that have gotten close. Yep. And he's 33 years old and he didn't play for two years. Like he's really not entitled. No, he's not, and I think that's a you no, know, that's a that's a mark of him as well. Like he's 33, he's not going to have 22 great games like he did for a five or six year period because yeah. you know because age is going to be the barrier there. There's no doubt, and how he pulls up and he, he you know, probably takes a bit more a bit more time to recover. Um, you've got some little niggles here and there as well. Um, so I think you're going to see some average games by his standard, um, but you're still going to see some great games. And you know, as you said, he's, he's at least had three, probably four or five of those this year. Carlton really went after him last week. I guess other teams may follow that now. Have you spoken about how... It's interesting that. I, you know, he's played for, I don't know how long, 16 years. I don't think that's the first time teams have gone after him. I, I find it funny that people would say that, and they did, but teams have gone after him in the past, and he's performed well, so I don't think that's an issue. We, we as a team need to support him more, uh, but I think Gary copes with that exceptionally well. I think, he, I think he'll be fine if teams do that, but I think as a, as a team and teammates, we need to support him better. Yeah, so it wouldn't have been too many 33-year-olds to get an 18-man tag right in the history of football, would it? No, not really, no. <laughs> But uh, I, think that, I think that just shows the respect and the quality of performance that he can dish out. Gaz himself would be, he'd be too humble to make it about him, but is the team motivated to get a win for the occasion? Um, well, we haven't spoken about that yet. Um, I'm not a big one for milestones, because um, it can be a false motivation at times. Um, Gary probably transcends that a bit, I think, what he's done for this club um, and, and the way he's gone about it and the, and the way he's led. So. That'll be mentioned at the appropriate time, and we'll talk about that and um, have a bit of a, uh, I suppose, presentation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, uh, I think that will just add to probably the motivation that we need to bounce back from last week. Rocket, you, you've coached some pretty incredible players in your time. Is there, is there a trait that Gaz and the, the other ones at the top level that you can really recognise? That really oh, they're just a drive to be the best they can be. Just uh, uh, they've got this innate. It's more than pride. <clears throat> it's more than pride to be able to say I want to get to a certain level. It's just they've got to drive to be the best and they do whatever they can to be the best player they can be. So um, they've got that real, that real hunger 
Um, and everyone looks at the best players saying, well, there's no stress on them, there's, you know, they've just got talent, but there's probably more stress on them. I never understood that until I started coaching Sydney. Um, you just think the best players, oh, they know what to do, they'll be fine, but uh, the pressure they put on themselves, um, insecurities at time that they've got because they've got such a high level, um, it's different to us mere mortals. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, and I think, I think Gary's in that, in that situation where he just, he just strives, you know, he's so competitive but strives to be the best player he can be. Are you expecting the dominoes to fall pretty quickly in regards to the players that you have off contract at the end of the year? Uh, just the one? Yeah, just the one. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. That'll, that'll work itself out pretty quickly. In, we were just talking about the CBA. In a expansion state, like except in Victoria, the CBA is going to widen the gap between the Rich and poor, I think. The money's going to go to the superstars, but up here, we overpay C graders to keep them. Yes. So there's a problem for you that more money keeps coming in and it's just going by necessity, yeah. being dispersed the wrong way. Yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> and understanding the problem being in Sydney when I was there, and understanding the problem that we have in Brisbane have probably more than, and I suppose GWS is a different problem, um, yeah. uh, that. Yeah, there is need to be a bit of an allowance because the go home factor. There's ten teams in Melbourne. There's only two here, so there's and there's not as many Queenslanders out in the market who are playing with other clubs to come home. Um, so that's uh, that's always uh, that, that's always difficult. And I think you think about the about the CBA. I there's sixteen percent plus four uh, percent veterans allowance, which adds up to the twenty. That's going to go to the stars, and I reckon 25% will go to the stars. The bottom end will get uh, a little bit more because that's, that's the way it'll be scaled. Yeah. It's the ones in the middle, yeah. and I don't think, and all teams will be like it, but you cannot afford to play C pluses or B minus players, however you rate them, four or 500,000 to keep them, because yeah. you'll see that those players, they'll want their slice of pie too. The managers will want their 20%. And you can't afford to pay it because it'll blow your salary cap. Even though there's a big increase in salary cap, it'll go pretty quickly. And so you can see a lot more trading. Yeah. Players will be disgruntled. They'll want and managers will take them to other clubs. But this is all clubs yeah. across the league. But clubs have got to be better and will have to be more uh, vigilant about who they pay. And they'll just have to, players will have to move. Yeah. And, uh, and I think less and less the Melbourne media will say, oh, people are leaving the Gold Coast or leaving GWS or leaving Brisbane because it'll happen across the league. Yeah. Because you cannot carry seven, eight, ten players on between four and five, fifty thousand. You yeah. just, just can't. You just, just won't be able to because because your top enders now will get close to a million little clubs. That's what's going to happen. So it's gone. Yeah. Um, so I'll be interested. I think you're right. I think the rich will get richer. Yeah. And the media, I reckon that it's the middle tier players, the ones who are going to suffer. Is it a Victorian-centric model? I mean, you're forced to pay it. Yep. You want to pay it to who deserves it. It doesn't always happen up here because of that. Oh, I haven't looked at, at that that deep, Andrew, so I, I don't know. You'd have a pretty expensive needful team running around most weeks, but wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's where we're... You know, if, we, if, it, if Brisbane and us don't get an allowance because we're... And, and we probably won't... Um, We've got to make better decisions and not worry about perception that if players are pushed out or players go, well, that's just the way the, that's the, way the system's going to be now. Yeah. And there's certainly you know, players we may have in the past and probably now maybe a little bit more than maybe they've actually performed to. But we've got to make tougher decisions on, OK, well, we can't afford to keep player X's on 500, who's uh, probably 100 over what he should be he's earning, and we can't, now we're 20%, his manager wants 550 or 6, well... Sorry, okay. If he goes and people say, well, another one wants to leave Sunfield, it's more about the economics than anything else. Yeah, so yeah. the perception as this takes root across the league will, will, will help you, I guess. It'll, it, it'll lower the view that it's a uh, rats leaving a sinking ship thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, and I don't think we've had that. Yeah. I, I've got no, no doubt. I know Melbourne media like to play that. That hasn't been the case at all. Um, I think there's only three or four players. I keep saying there's only three or four players I want to keep that have gone, yeah. and every club would be in that. Hawthorne wanted to keep Franklin, and 
they wanted to keep uh, suckling and they want I mean players leave them that was for economics yeah. it just those things are going to happen uh, and there's going to be different reasons and um, it's going to be more so now that trading is going to be a frenzy at the end of the year there's no doubt